starting a series about spiritual warfare. So, uh, spiritual warfare and uh, the title of my message is about Know Your Enemy. Sabi mo nga sa katabi mo, Know Your Enemy. So, ano bang spiritual warfare? Naalala ko nung minsan po ay years ago, uh, nakatira kami, we're living in Plaridel, and we're about to move to another city to plant a church. And so we, we tried to find a, a house in Santa Rita uh, so that the new pastor would be able to really, to really uh, be able to, to kind of have a free hand to do what he wants to do in Plaridel. So we moved for a while at Santa Rita. And in Santa Rita, we are having a hard time finding a house. And uh, we saw one, and we liked the house so much. Three bedrooms, maganda ang landscape sa harap. At imagine, my swimming pool. Wow! Pero, uh, when we uh, ask people around that place, walang gusto mo mupa sa bahay na yon. <clears throat> Although it's very cheap, yung upa. Bakit? Because uh, a couple that owns the house was murdered in that place, in their house, inside the house. So, naging para siyang ghost house, you know? Ayaw ng mga, ayaw ng mga tao na, like, you know, uh, uh, umupa sa lugar na yung kapag ka, when they heard, na that's the reason why. And of course, tayong mga Christians, ano, uh, gusto natin yung mura at maganda, right? So, we were able to get the place for only 3,000 pesos. Imagine, what a, like, you know, jackpot, di ba? 3,000 pesos. And uh, the first that we were there, we really prayed for the place. We prayed for the place. And the middle of the night, nakakarinig kami ng ingay. Alright? May ingay. Mga parang kalampag ng mga kaldero. So, medyo parang iba yun, di ba? Okay, so, we decided the following night to ask our pastors to come and help us pray for that place. So, that is spiritual warfare. Nakikipaglaban tayo. We're having a warfare with the devil. Gusto niya, he wants us to be afraid. He doesn't want to bless us. He wants us to uh, really uh, allow him to, to paralyze you because of fear. And we prayed, and the pastor, they prayed also together with us. And praise God, the following night, wala na yung ingay. And through that years or months that we live more than a year there, we enjoy the place because of the blessing of God. Come on, give the Lord a praise for that. Amen. So, it's spiritual warfare. Halimbawa, like, you know, if you're a student, and uh, ito, every, in everyday life also, we experience what we call the spiritual warfare. If you are a student and you are uh, cramming for the exam, uh, during the exam you are tempted to what? To cheat. Okay? So, sino yung mga, ano no, nangungopia? Misan, di ba, uh, pag may mga reunion, nagbibiroan, ah, siya yung mahilig mangopia sa akin eh. Misan binabaligtad, di ba? So, yun na spiritual warfare because gusto ng kaaway na mag in ka sa temptation. Gawin yun. Or halimbawa, you are, uh, nandun ka sa maring nag-work ka sa isang company and you really want to be promoted from your job. You want, syempre kung promoted ka, there would be title and some uh, race of allowances and sometimes uh, kung desperate ka na gusto mo talaga mangyari yon, you move independently from God. Gusto mo gawin yon by yourself, by hook or by crook. And so, anong nangyayari? Uh, sometimes you are tempted to do things na para ma shortcut, mapadali yung tinatawag na promotion. And that is a spiritual warfare. Sabi mo nga sa katabi mo, that is a spiritual warfare. So that you are being tempted to do what is not the will of God. So anything, so sabi sa Bible in Ephesians 6 that says there that our warfare are not, are, it says in uh, Ephesians 6, for, our, for we are wrestling not against flesh and blood, 
but we are wrestling against the rulers, powers, authority in this world. And we are wrestling against the spiritual forces in the atmosphere. So ang kalaban po natin, hindi yung katabi natin. Alright? Hindi yung biyanan mo, hindi yung asawa mo. Alright? Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, hindi ikaw ang kaaway ko. Okay? So sabihin mo sa katabi mo, hindi rin, hindi rin ako, ikaw ang kaaway ko. Okay? So ang kaaway natin yung yung uh, spiritual forces in the in the atmosphere. Na siya yung nag influence for us to think things na uh, hindi natin dapat gawin yet ginagawa natin because the enemy is trying to influence your mind to do something na talagang uh, magkakasala ka and you will give in. So that is spiritual warfare. Amen? Alright, let's have a short prayer. Thank you, God. Father, we thank you and bless you, O Lord. We thank you, O God, for your word. We pray that you will open our hearts of understanding, our minds, so God, help us, O God, to, uh, that we help us, O Lord, to receive your word. And we pray for your word to come with conviction, with power, and with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So, let's read first. Uh, let's prepare our hearts to read some of the verses here in uh, Genesis 3. And before that, of course, the title of my message is Know Your Enemy. But before you, you when you are in spiritual warfare, it's so important that we know first who God is. Amen? Not the enemy first. We don't want to focus more on enemy to glorify the devil and to see him in every corner. Alright? Na parang, asan ba yung diablo rito? Ay, mukhang, may, mukhang ibang pakiramdam ko rito. Mukhang meron dito. Mukhang yung taong ito may karga. Alright? So, nagigina tayong suspicious. That's not will, the will of God. We want to glorify Jesus. We want to be aware of His presence. And alam naman ninyo, it's been through the years that we taught you about who God is, His nature, His character, His power, His presence. So somehow you have that foundation to be able to fight the enemy. Amen? And even though you are just a new Christian, and yet you have faith in God, and you believe that God lives inside you, pwede ka nang lumaban. Amen? I remember when I was a new Christian, just newly Christians, maybe wala pang one year. And one night, I'm sleeping, and during my sleep, uh, akala ko totoong-totoo because nakatalokbong ako ng kumot, and I could feel yung wings. I feel like doon sa kwarto may pumasok na paniki na talagang panay ang pagaspa sa mukha ko, and I can't even breath. So that's harassment of the enemy, alright? That's a spiritual warfare. Are you aware of that? So, uh, misan mararanasan mo yun, lalo na kung bago ka palang Christian. Ini-stop ka, gagawang ka ng hindi magagandang bagay, maaring uh, iba't ibang kaparaanan. But during that time, ako, yun yung naranasan ko. And because I can't breathe, ang nasabi ko lang is Jesus. I just, pinilit kong magsalita. Like, you know, I can't speak because... I feel like numb all over my body. But I tried to speak the name Jesus. I said, Jesus, Jesus, until I say that loud, Jesus. And when I woke up, wala naman. There's nothing there. Wala. Walang panike, walang kung ano. So that is the attack of the devil. All right? So I'm telling you, even though you are a new Christian, you can fight the enemy. By the name of Jesus, knowing the Holy Spirit live inside you, pwede tayong lumaban sa kaaway. Now, sa labanan po, it's very important that that uh, somehow kilala natin kung ano, sino yung kalaban natin. Even when you, like you know, in boxing or in basketball, in some sports, if there are some competition, whatever competition is that, it's always get good to know, sino ba yung kalaban ko? 
Sino yung, uh, ano, ano ba yung strength ng kalaban na to? Ano ba yung kanyang weaknesses? Paano ko ba siya matatalo? So we need to know, dun sa, uh, sa mga ganong bagay, it's just uh, standard operating procedure to know your enemy. So that's why we need also to know the enemy in a spiritual sense because he is real. Amen? Alright? So kailangan natin na uh, malaman sino ba yung kaaway. Sabi nga sa 2 Corinthians 2.11 that we should not be unaware of the devil's schemes lest he outwit us. Hindi tayo kailangan na parang hindi natin, parang, parang inosente tayo kung sino yung kalaban natin. Kilalanin din natin kung sino yung kalaban natin. Alright? Kilalanin natin. Uh, uh, one of the one of the book written about yung tinatawag na uh, mga war o guerra, yung mga military war, ano? I'm talking about military war. Merong isang book na ang pangalan ay Art of War by Sun Chu. Uh, si Sun Chu is a famous Chinese general uh, that lives uh, during the 1700. At ang book na ito, it's all required reading for all the military men or uh, basta uh, related to war. So, ito ang sabi niya. He said something like this. I just want to quote this. It says, know your enemy and know yourself and you can fight a hundred battles without disaster. So, kilalanin mo yung kaaway mo, kilalanin mo yung sarili mo rin, baka hindi mo kilala yung sarili mo, ano rin yung strength mo, ano rin yung weaknesses mo, and uh, you can fight a hundred battles without disaster. So, it's very important that we know our enemy, we know ourselves. Okay? Thank you, Lord. Now, alam natin ang kaaway natin ay ang jablo. Huwag natin yung itake for granted. Alright? Are you there? So, uh, let's read these uh, verses in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Let's see, ito yung first mention of the devil, okay? Huwag kayong matatakot when we say, when we mention the word, of, the, word the devil, our enemy, alright? Uh, dahil totoo man siya, may kapangyarihan tayo over him. Because Jesus had died already on the cross. He won the victory over death, sin, devil, and all the works of the enemy. So nothing to be afraid of. So it says here in Genesis, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat. We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. And you must not touch it, or you will die. Verse 4, you will not certainly die. The serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God knowing good and evil. So, makita natin how the enemy works here, all right? And it mentioned here that, uh, that the devil is like the serpent, the serpent that, dece that deceived Eve. So, in the Bible also, so how would we know, how would we know that the serpent there is really the devil? So it was mentioned several times in the Bible, but I'll just mention one verse again. Revelation 12, 9. The dragon was hurled down, that, that ancient serpent. Okay, again, it's mentioned serpent, called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angel with him. So we can see in this passage that Satan is referred to the serpent. So, ang history ng serpent is he was there reigning with God in heaven. And uh, because he rebelled, he was hurled down to the earth with the one-third of the heavenly beings. 
we will discuss more about that later on. But we want to study, we want to know the enemy, uh, who he is, and uh, not everything we can discuss today, but just a few. So number one is we want to be aware. We want to be aware that the Bible teaches that there is a literal devil and a literal, literal demon. Spirits will bring much pain and suffering on earth. Alright? So hindi ito pigmentation of our imagination. Okay? Na uh, yung bang may sungay tapos mayroong buntot. Di ba? Tapos cute siya. Yung mga ganong uh, pinoportray. So, uh, hindi, hindi basta ganun ang jablo. So, ang jablo ay totoo at siya yung nagbibigay, nag-influence ng mind natin to do something bad. Ang gusto niya ay i ka, gusto niya mapahama ka. The Bible says that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Alright? Siya yung karakteristik niya. Siya yun. So, totoong may jablo and he wants na ikaw ay uh, madaya niya. Gusto niya na talagang uh, ikaw ay madala niya. So, the enemy is real at most of the problems here on earth at mga result ng sufferings is because of him. Alright? Sometimes we blame God. But it's the devil who are doing these things. Because it says in the Bible that the devil has come to destroy, to steal, to kill, steal, and destroy. So that's the characteristic of the devil. So we'll go again dito sa, we'll go again here in uh, Genesis 3. Of course, the devil is a deceiver and a tempter. Let's read what happened again here in Genesis 3.1. Let's see how he, uh, who he is. The serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, You must not... Uh, he said to the woman, Did God really say, You must not eat from any tree in the garden? So ang enemy, ang gusto niyan, maglagay ng doubt sa mind mo. Pag sinabi ng God, ito sa Bible, di ba, if you are a Bible reader, or, uh, you know, uh, talagang, talagang... Uh, you hear what the Word of God says, sometimes your enemy will bring some excuses in your mind or even he will question you again. Did God really say that? Alright? Hear that. Nakikinig ba tayo? Amen. Hear that. Pag may narinig ka yung ganon na parang nag, la, naglalagay ng katanungan again in your mind, did God really say that? That is the devil. Alright? He wants to put doubt in your mind. Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Then in verse 4, he said, You will not certainly die. And verse 5, For God knows that when you eat it from, from it, that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So the enemy will not only put a doubt, but he will make God a liar. Because, di ba, God says, the moment you eat this fruit, you will certainly die. And of course, they died. Like, you know, uh, spiritually, they died and they were cast off of the Garden of Eden. So, they died. Apart from God, you are dead. Amen? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, apart from God, you are dead. If you don't have the Spirit of God, you're dead. Even though, even though you're eating and breathing, all right? So, so he made God as a liar, saying, you will not die. You know what would happen to you? So this is a temptation. Ito yung pangkamo ng kaaway. God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So, minamalign. He is maligning God. He's distorting the character of God in front of you. At sinasabi na, ah, alam mo ba, pagka ikaw ay kum kumain ito, ikaw ay magiging katulad ng Diyos, knowing, what go go knowing good from evil. So, these are uh, yung direct attack sa character of God. So, 
yun yung mga, like, you know, yun yung mga temptation o yun yung mga, mga kasinungalingan at pang, uh, pangdadaya ng kaaway sa atin. So, be mindful of that. Of course, the enemy would like to tell us that God uh, is not good. You know, he will tell you, you know what? You've been faithful to your God, doing all those things that you've been doing, and you're always in the church serving God. Why these things happen to you? If God is true, if God is a loving God, why did these problems happen to you? Diba? And you feel like, yes, why is it if God is really true? And sometimes you feel a hurt and you resent God. And after that, you want to rebel against God. Okay? So the purpose of the enemy is to make you rebel against God. Say, forget about it. I don't want anymore. So yun yung gusto ng kaaway na mangyari. So that's a devil. He is a liar, a deceiver, and he is led astray. Okay? Uh, siya ay talagang... He, he, he doesn't even know that he is a deceiver. He doesn't even know that he is a liar. What he believes in his mind is... He is the right one. He is right that he is doing the right thing because he is deceived. Amen? All right? Alam niyo mga tao na deceive or mga tao na like uh, that believes the lies, they really believe that they are right. Okay? Uh, some of us has been deceived too, you know, maybe in the past or even now. Akala natin sometimes tama tayo sa lahat ng bagay. But if we open up our hearts to God and we ask God, Lord, have mercy upon me. Kung ako talaga'y may kasalanan, ipakita mo sa akin, teach me to humble myself. That's the only time that we would be set free from those lies and deception of the enemy. So, as I told you, the, uh, okay, number one, the enemy is real. All right? He's there trying to, he's like, a, it says in James that the devil is like a prowling lion seeking whom he may devour. So, totoo siya. Naghahanap siya ng sisilain, naghahanap siya na i-destroy ang buhay mo, naghahanap siya ng i-deceive, naghahanap siya ng magiging big sim niya, kakampi niya. Yun ang kaaway. So, and number two, of course, is uh, his real... Katulad na sabi ko, he is a deceiver, a liar, and he is led astray. So, okay, let us also read these verses. Uh, Isaiah 14.12 Isaiah 14.12 So let's see what are the other characteristics of the enemy. Ano ba siya? So let's see yung his origin so that we would know who he is. Ano yung origin niya? Saan siya galing? Bakit siya bumagsak? Bakit siya uh, like you know na from a godly heavenly creature ay nagis siyang serpent at nagis siyang like uh, tempter. It says here in Isaiah 14:12, How have you fallen from heaven? Morning star, son of the dawn, you have been cast down to the earth. You once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will arise, raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit in throne on the mount of the assembly, on the utmost heights of Mount Zapon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. Verse 15, but you are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. So we could see here kung ano yung origin niya. Siya ay galing sa heaven. She, he is super, super beautiful, super, super uh, like all the good things nasa kanya na. And yet he was not satisfied with what he has received from God. God elevated him to be the super angels of all the angels. And yet, he was deceived by his own beauty. He was deceived by his own wisdom. Na he worshiped himself. And he feel like na, hindi lang ganito. Dapat, 
ganito ang mangyari sa akin. So, as I read to you yung five wills, ano yung five wills, ano yung gustong gawin ng kaaway? Ito yung, ito yung sabi ni Satan, the five wills. Sabi niya, I will ascend to the heavens, I will raise my throne above the stars of God, I will sit enthroned on the mount of the assembly on the utmost heights of Mount Sapon, I will ascend above the tops of the clouds, I will make myself like the most high God. Kung titignan po natin yung temptation na yan, the same temptation that he said to Eve. Di ba? Sabi kay Eve, no. Sabi niya, you will, you, will, uh, you will become like God. You will know what is good and of evil and you will, uh, you will reign. So yun yung temptation. And that is also what uh, the reason why the enemy the devil fall because of that pride and arrogance. Pride and arrogance. We can see yung pride and arrogance when we are, you know, when we are doing things independent of God. Okay? Gusto kong umaman. By hook or by crook. I want to be successful. I want to be make known. I want to be popular and famous. Kanina, di ba, yung artista, dyan sa baba, yung, yung merong stage, uh, anong nakalagay dong title? Artista something. Sometimes, uh, marami ngayon, lalo yung mga millennials, pag tinanong mo, gusto nila maging artista. Gusto nila maging super, super sikat, super, super yaman. Tama ba? Walang masama doon. But if you do that apart from God, you are being tempted by the devil. Because you want to do that independent of God. You want to do it in your own strength. Katulad ng temptation kay Jesus, di ba? Uh, nung siya ay, nung siya ay like, you know, uh, he's hungry and he prayed and passed for 40 days. And after 40 days ng prayer and fasting niya in the wilderness, he was tempted by the devil. And the devil tempted him and says, if you are the son of God, make this bread a stone. Kung titignan natin, it's legitimate yung needs ni Jesus during that time because he's hungry and 40 days siyang hindi kumakain. Okay na, tapos na, di ba? Pwede na siyang kumain, di ba? Why not? But, hindi, hindi pwedeng gawin yun. We don't, uh, we don't, it's, an, it's a legitimate needs. But, Meeting that legitimate needs in an illegitimate way ay mali. Dahil galing sa jablo yung temptation. Who's the source of the temptation? Tingnan nyo, kanino ba yung source ng temptation na to? Bakit ko ito gagawin? Uh, if if uh, may mga feeling ka na dinideprive ka ng God or parang God is holding something good to you and you don't want to enjoy it at the moment because the devil is withholding things to you. He's not a faithful, good God. Maging maingat na tayo ron. Alright? Okay? So, halimbawa, katulad ng yung sex before marriage. So, that is uh, legitimate needs ng tao, but doing it before getting married is not proper. That's illegitimate and that is a sin turning you away from God or yung mga ibang mga temptation that comes on our way. These are not, these are not proper. This is, these are temptation that we should not allow in our lives. So we should not do it independent on, of what God says. So may mga timing in everything. May timing for you to become rich, all right, to become popular. My timing for you to be successful. Don't do it apart from God. Allow God to, to, uh, to work in your life. So, in summary, ano yung character and nature of the enemy? Number one, he is real. Angel lang siya. He's the one that influences our mind to do bad things. He is real. He's seeking, he's seeking someone he wants to devour. So, mag-ingat tayo, be careful. Number two is the enemy is a liar, he is a tempter, and he is led astray. 
siya ay sinungaling. Sabihin nga natin, ang jablo ay sinungaling. So, siya ay mandaraya. Siya ay uh, mapapahamak. Siya ay napapah- napahamak o pinapahamak ka. So, and number three is yung pride and arrogance. We should be careful na huwag tayong madala ng arrogance na like, you know, na like yung five I wills ng kaaway. I will ascend. I will sit in throne. So, ito yung mga uh, kailangan natin na ingatan sa ating mga puso. We need to be able to say no to these things. So, so ang kaaway ay uh, subtle, hindi halata kung kumilos, alright? Subtle siya. So, ka, katulad ng sabi nga ni Pastor Ritz, para yung virus. Kumbaga sa computer, hindi mo alam na sisira na pala yung mga files mo because of the virus. So, ganun din siya. Hindi, hindi natin alam yung puso natin, kinakain na pala niya. Yung isip natin, kinakain na pala niya. Because he is devouring, devouring us already. So, subtle ang kaaway. Sabihin, tama. Uh, sinabi ba talaga ng Diyos yan? O, uh, ganun ba talaga ang Diyos? So, have to be careful na to allow these things to, uh, nag, tayo ay madaya ng kaaway at tayo ay bumagsak kung saan tayo naroon. Amen? Ang kalaoban ng Diyos is for us to be able to reach the destiny that God has for us. Ang gusto ng Diyos sa atin, more than what we ever think or ask for. Yan ang gusto ng Diyos sa atin. Kapag hindi mo nararanasan yung ganung bagay, uh, ay ibig sabihin, maaring, uh, maaring you're just doing this, you are just experiencing the second best. God wants the best for you. Amen? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, God wants the best for you. So we need to know what is spiritual warfare is, what is knowing the enemy. Sabi, rito po, sabi ni Sansu rito, uh, as, a, uh, as a closing, San Chu, the general of, uh, one of the powerful general of the Chinese army during the 1700. He said, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. All right, ulitin ko lang ha. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. All right? May mga dadaanan talaga tayong mga problema. Okay? Meron po tayong dadaanan ng mga problema. Pero we will not be afraid because we know God, we know the enemy, and we know ourselves. But it says here, if you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory gain, you will suffer a defeat. Meron pa ring defeat na mangyayari. Lalo na if you know if you know neither the enemy nor yourself, lagi kang defeated. All right? So we need to know we need to know more God, we need to know the enemy and we need to know ourselves. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord. Tayo po natin.